PC world. Google Stadia review, the console experience without the console. Google Stadia stakes its claim as one of the best in cloud gaming. Okay, let's see. Are they going to dump all over it? Or right. Kevin Casper, PC World, July 1st, 2022. Okay, so let's see. How does PC World rate Stadia? At a glance, experts rating one, two, three, four, four and a half, oh, almost five star. Oh, I wanted to do a video highlighting the pros and cons. Pros, easy of access to the whole platform. 4K display support that genuinely works. Some fairly deep game discounts for Stadia Pro members. Cons, the free games with Stadia Pro have been somewhat lackluster. So free the free games with Stadia. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Okay, so we're talking about AAA games, right? Okay. Game library is a bit behind the mainstream. Okay. Our verdict, Google Stadia offers a wide array of titles to choose from and it's easy to use interface makes for an enjoyable cloud gaming experience. Overall, this is one of the best cloud gaming platforms available, especially if you opt for the pro subscription. Best prices today, Google Stadia, retail, Google 999, okay. In recent years, the cloud gaming market has gained a number of new names and none have been more hyped than Google Stadia. Launched in late 2019, which was the same as xCloud, by the way, it ran into a few stumbling blocks along the way, but its pivot to focus on third-party game hosting has seen it flourish. Now a mainstay in the cloud streaming industry, Stadia has a lot to offer. We tested both the free and pro versions of the service. Let's see how it all stands up. Okay, let's check it out. Google Stadia, the plans. Google Stadia comes in two forms, free and pro. With the free access, you are able to play a select few free games, such as Destiny 2 or games that you bought for Stadia at up to 1080p resolution at 60 frames per second, including any online multiplayer games. That's it. You can fully play games that you buy without the need to purchase any expensive hardware as long as your internet connection is up to the... Uh, to handling it a a minimum of 10 megabits per second. <clears throat> Don't accept membership comes with some welcome perks. Stadia Pro supports streaming games at up to 4K resolution, 60 frames per second with HDR and 5.1 surround sound support with connections of 35 megabits per second or greater. Additionally, Stadia Pro will provide a handful of free games that you can claim to your library to play as long as your Pro subscription is active. Most games, however, are neither free nor included in Stadia Pro, but instead have to be bought. <clears throat> Some games do have discounts for Pro members, though. Google Stadia Game Library. In essence, you can imagine Google Stadia as its own console or popular PC game store. It has, a, it has a fairly wide selection of games you can buy and play on the service. And those games aren't playable on any other service. It's much like uh, how purchasing a game for PlayStation 5 doesn't allow you to play it through the Epic Game Store or on Nintendo Switch. Yeah, we all do it, right? Oh, look at that. All right, all right. At the time of writing, there are just over 270 games available on Stadia. That said, the Stadia game library is a bit all over the place in terms of the kind of games and their release timeframes. It feels like Stadia is always trying to catch up to the mainstream market, but that means games both new and old are always becoming available for purchase on the platform. I like that little positive spin right at, at the end. That's nice. During our test with Stadia Pro, the games that could be claimed with a subscription aren't exactly the most popular ones out there, but there have been plenty of good ones, including Life is Strange Remastered, Terraria, and Control Ultimate Edition. If you're looking for the higher performance that Stadia Pro offers over its free service, then the Pro games are a nice slow trip of bonuses. Google Stadia uh, user interface... Yeah, right. First thing we feel the need to call out is that Google makes it fairly difficult to find and understand what Stadia actually has to offer in its own website and media. True, true, true. Uh, it took an uncomfortable amount of time to even see that the Stadia service can be played on for free. As almost all of its promotional materials site information tries to push users to Stadia Pro. That's exactly what I mentioned in my Google Stadia 101 uh, video. It's the one thing that irks me about uh, Stadia 
even to this day, they should just push free, push free. And then all of a sudden somebody comes in and they happen to have a little pro or, you know, sign up for pro receive free games. Um, I mean, that's basically where the trials are. They're, you know, everything that they're pushing to be the free console that for an extra fee, you can have, uh, you can just upgrade the quality and get some additional games. They should push for that, man. And then they, they're, that's my one frustration besides the fact that it's not supported in Hawaii. Um, hey, what's up, Wilson? I'm Primo. I just woke up and going back to sleep, <laughs> but hope you had a good day, my friend. Yeah, man, get that sleep in. Get that sleep in, brother. Uh, okay, once signed up, however, the Stadia experience is very simple and straightforward. You access your Stadia account and the Stadia interface throughout uh, through a browser or the Stadia app on the other devices. Uh, the, the fact that you had to use the Stadia app before was also kind of annoying. Google Chrome is going to be the obvious prefer preference for this on PC. Inside the service, you will be presented with a home screen of offers and games you can purchase, claim, or play depending on the nature of your account. To do any of that, you just click the big visual boxes for the, these games to purchase and or launch, uh, launch them straight from the browser. Uh, oh, what happened here? Managing your account, including unsubscribing from Stadia Pro if you need to, is also fairly simple. The options are under your account icon in the upper right corner of the Stadia browser view, and most options sit under the Stadia settings selection from subscriptions to control options to game sharing and Google family accounts. It is pretty good. Speaking of controllers, you do not need the Stadia controller to play games. With Stadia, we were able to play with an Xbox One controller connected to the PC with no issues. For the games that support it, you can also play Stadia games with a mouse and keyboard. Yep. We did see a couple of quirks though. When you launch a game, it will launch in a full screen view that locks in your cu uh, cursors to that monitor if you have multiple displays. However, not all games have an exit or quit to desktop uh, option in their menus. This is what happened with Terraria and there uh, was no indication on how to actually leave the full screen to get back to the Stadia interface or anything. Yeah, I guess if you're not using the Stadia controller, you don't know to push shift tab. Yeah? For these instances, all you need to do is press F11 on your, on your keyboard for the standard browser full screen toggling or hold down the escape key and you get a Stadia menu to either go back to the game or exit it. But there was n nowhere in the Stadia startup process that explained that to us. There were a couple of times where a game experience just froze up and crashed outright and there is no message or information indicating that what happened. It's just as frustrating as uh, those times a game just crashed to the desktop on a PC without any kind of error message. I like, I mean, I do like the positive, the fact that they're not just saying it's a Stadia issue. You know what I mean? They have a little bit of a um, uh, context to, you know, to uh, games crashing. <clears throat> yeah, but then you when it does crash, Sometimes you get a message that says your your game had a glitch, uh, but most of the time it just goes black. The screen goes black and you don't know what's going on. Google Stadia, game performance. To note for our test, our inter internet connection speed test results were about 447 megabits down and 22.6 megabits up, which definitely meets the recommended, recommended requirements for Stadia services. With that in mind, the in-game experience for the Stadia games we tried out was superb. In testing games like um, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, Control Unlimited Edition, and City Skylines. Everything both felt and looked great, especially with Stadia Pro. Perf performance is almost always exceptional, barring any game crashes for our play, uh, play times and testing. Oh, nice. We weren't really able to dig into any graphics options on the games as they seem to have pr preset restrictions to fit whatever systems are running things on Google's end. Regardless, it was all smooth, responsive, and had no notable performance drops, lag spikes, or stream artifacts, even on a 4K display. Uh, bottom line, Google Stadia can provide the console gaming experience without needing to get any expensive hardware and can look 
even better with this pro subscription you still have to buy most of your games but if you're coming at it as your primary gaming service that's not a bad way to go about it okay okay yeah see that's it you can criticize a service without dumping on it uh, and you can also look at uh, issues with it and you know apply some context some you know bigger picture type thing uh, by explaining that you know other other systems run the same way you know yeah I like that good job PC world um, I wasn't triggered 